Good morning. It's time for church. Sorry that the sound wasn't working there. We'll get it working for next week. It's wonderful to see you. Welcome to Sunday service. I'm Reverend Elizabeth Mora, senior minister here at Unity Northwest Church. And my sound man who's in the background is gonna come and tell me that yes, you're hearing me. So we will go forward and it's wonderful to have another Sunday morning service with you. I see that everyone's already commenting over in the, I gotta get my directions right, over in the chat box. That's where it is for me. I don't know if I'm pointing to the right direction for you. It depends on whether you're on an iPad or whether you're sitting on your computer or on your phone. Thanks for checking in with us and thanks for coming together to remember the truth of who you are. I take a minute to do that myself. Woo! Been running around trying to figure out what's going on with the sound, getting everything set up. And now I'm here and now you're here. And now it's church. <laughs> it's so wonderful to have you. And that's why I like to remind all of us that you are the church. It's not me. It's not even that building. The church is you and a set of teachings that come together. This group of wonderful individuals that's joined right now and into the future as we watch this later on for some of us. We join together around these teachings to remind ourselves that, first of all, we're part of a community. Thank you for making that so. Thank you for making a spiritual community in a time when not everyone sees the benefit in that. But if you're here right now or watching this later on, you know the benefit. You know the benefit of coming on and seeing people's names flash by and in the future when we get back together and the friendships that you have that you connect with and that you know that this is a safe place and a powerful, safe, positive teaching for you. Thank you for being the church. Thank you for being the light and the faces behind the little green dot on my computer. Yeah, I look at a computer screen, but that's not what I see. What I see is all of you. And thank you for putting all of the comments because that gives me the feedback. That's me looking out into the audience and seeing you on a Sunday in our sanctuary. Thank you for taking the time for yourself and making the investment in Sunday service for you. Let's go ahead and pray, shall we? Here we are once again a collection of beautiful souls. That's right, you're beautiful, I said it. A collection of beautiful souls, of loving hearts, hearts that come here to be compassionate, to be joyful, and to be real. For whatever has gone on in your week that's been challenging, I hold that in the light for you right now. If you've been hurt, if you're feeling physically challenged, emotionally challenged, if all the chaos in the world at the moment is getting to you, I lift you up in the light. I surround you with healing arms for comfort and a reminder that there is more than this. There is always more and if we get a moment to look up, whether our eyes are closed or we're outside later, look up. Just the action of lifting up our head and moving our eyes upward changes us. Look up and see God. Look up and see possibilities and see an open sky, an open room and see it filled with possibilities for something new. And if this week has been more of a joyful week for you, I celebrate that with you. And when we're done with this service, take a moment to write down what was special about this week so that when you have one of those other weeks, you have your reminders that the wheel is always turning. We're always experiencing 
the flow of life in and out, up and down. And the core of you is always the same. And as we continue into this election time in our country, I continue to lift us all up with prayers for healing on all sides, for a way for us to come together while honoring differences. And I pray for our president and all of those affected by the current COVID outbreak. We send them light and love and healing in the same way that we send it to those in our community who have health challenges right now. And so we know and we affirm here on this day at Unity Northwest Church that God is the goodness that is everywhere present. There is never darkness that cannot be lifted up by the light. And we are that light. And so it is. And so we let it be. Amen. Oh, a special welcome to everyone who is joining us for the first time or maybe the second or third time for our new friends who have found us recently. We are so glad that you're here. And to all of those who have been with us before, we welcome you back. And whether you are watching right now, live on Sunday, or you tune in to us later, we're so glad you're here. And if you would like more information, just send your email to unitynw at yahoo.com, and we will send you more information. We would normally hand out a packet to you with a little brochure letting you know about us. And if you'd like more information, check our webpage or certainly send us an email. We would love to know who's been online with us today or in the future. And thanks for watching on YouTube and Facebook videos if you are watching later on. We love that we live on, don't we? And you who have been on with us before already know the drill and you're already there. So thank you for commenting. Continue to make this your service. So when you can hear the music, <laughs> get up and dance and comment, say hello to each other just as you've already been. Let's do all we can to make this as much like it used to be as we can. So thank you for checking in. If you haven't already, pop a quick hi below and we will see who's been on with us in just a moment. Let us begin then, continue on with Sunday, October 4th, according to Doe, fearless. I am fearless as I live authentically. Ha, one of my favorite words. In the past, I may have hidden my inner light, afraid to be myself. I may have tried to please others by conforming to someone else's idea of who I should be. I may have shrunk from an aspiration, fearing that I would fail in pursuit of my goal. I may have doubted the divine perfection at the core of my spiritual self, identifying with my perceived flaws and feeling small and inadequate. Today, I make a new choice. I choose to live fearlessly drawing upon my faith to believe in myself, my imagination to envision my best life, and my understanding to know my divinity. Bold and brave, I am fearless as I live my life authentically, pursue my dreams, and express my divine nature. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, six. Hmm. Fearless and authentic. I don't know if that touched any of you as much as it touched me. Ah, just the words that I needed to hear. I love that the Daily Word, which is our um, bi-monthly, semi-monthly, bi-monthly, um, every two months. It's the little magazine that we send out from Unity Village. And if you're not already a subscriber, please think about getting this. I'm trying to get to the front page. Anyway, here's what it looks like. So the Daily Word, it's a cornerstone of Unity. If you aren't already subscribing, go ahead and think about that. 
Now, a big hello to everyone who's on the phone or on the phone with us, everyone who's with us here. Let's check in and see as if you were sitting in the sanctuary, turning around and greeting and hugging people. We've got Jeanette Doe, great to see you. Cindy Georgiulis, one of our board members. Tatiana, oh, I will get this worked out. It's so beautiful. They're gonna love it so much. Hi, Andrew, you sounded great here in my living room. And Mary and Karen and Mickey are all there. And we got the sound going now. Hi, Carolyn, Pat, great to see you there. She says good morning to her Unity friends and blessings from Hal, Jeanette, Joan and Kat. It's our foursome. Hi, Mark. Hi, Jean. The Bostons are here. Good morning, family. Good morning, Tanya and to the girls and they're hearing me now. We've got a good morning from Arturo, Rob and Lori. Lori, I hope things are better for you. Feel free to check in if you would like to. Oops, what happened here? Oh, here we go. This is a new friend that I met. Hi, Elaine, it's great to see you. It turns out that we have a friend from many, many years ago, and she reached out, Elaine. Great to have you online, this is exciting. The coat hanger experiment worked. We are really charged with energy and this proves it. So Jeanette, you did the experiment, or, or you're saying my coat hanger experiment. Okay, I'm gonna show it again for those who missed it, because I was even impressed with how great that worked. Hi, good to see Isabella and Ruth, Dallas, Bobby, Mark, Patricia, Mark, Morgan, hello, welcome back, Morgan. It's great to see you again. I think this is week two, so everyone say hi. And um, yes, dance, Elaine is a dancer. We also have that in common, so yes. Hi, Don, most pleased to tune in to this good group. Uh, don't you feel that? Thanks, Don, it's good to have you too. And Jeanette is going to do the experiment. Jeanette, if we can meet up this week at the church, I'll bring mine in and you can try them if you want. And a few of us really enjoyed the picnic at Cindy's. Thank you, Cindy. And my beloved friend and colleague, Therese Dunlin Lee. Hello, Therese. Wow, I am so excited. I've got all these great folks on today too. And indeed I did it. Oh, so Jeanette, you did the experiment too. I love it, thank you. So stay tuned. Cindy says hi back to Morgan on week two. Stay tuned, we're gonna have um, really, we're gonna have fun with coat hangers later. I know that sounds really weird, but yes, Morgan, we're blessed to have you with us again. Thanks everyone. I'm so pumped to see all these folks here. So that was our check-in. Ah, so you've just, if you were in our sanctuary, you would have just had this, maybe this greeting time probably would have sung a little something. You can hum a little ditty in your head for now. And then we would be turning to this time of meditation. This is where we turn our attention inward. Uh, and it's a gift to you, I hope. I know, especially back in my early days before I was meditating on my own more, oh, uh, Sunday service would be about the only time in my week that I would actually just sit quietly with nothing to do for a few minutes and whoops, and it was a gift. So I invite you now into the gift of your meditation today. And if you would like to go ahead and take three deep breaths with me, And another, and another. I feel that connection with everyone on this service here today and with those in the future. We are breathing together. We are breathing the same breath. This breath unites all of us, always here for us. With no effort, the breath comes to us. And we realize it's been here all along. 
And then we realize the same is true for God. The same is true for my spiritual truth. It's always here. In this gift of this time, I sit in this knowing, this beingness that's effortless. I realize as the outer world fades into the background and the still small voice comes forward, here is truth. Here is my heart, here is my soul. Each breath putting me in divine alignment with the good, with God. I let this peace wash over me. I let joy wash over me. I may even choose to smile just a little bit to change the resting pose of my face for the moment. Letting tension go, letting all judgments go for now. I rest. I rest in the silence. What a gift to be in a community, to have the resources to be online right now, to hold sacred space of silence. This is no small thing. This is a blessing to each person here, to each person in your life, for the calmness that it brings to you, for the energy for the light that it brings to shine even brighter. And as you go forward, you make a difference that way. Your light beams even brighter. And we make a difference out in this world. Never forget that. And so it is. Amen. Believe it or not, it is week four of our experiment with spiritual living. I am excited to hear what the results have been. For those who are dropping in for the first time, we are in week four of a book called E Squared, An Experiment in Spiritual Living. And it's about taking the truths that we know in our head and in our heart, the ones that we talk about, and proving them to ourselves. Take them into this real world. Instead of just nice words on a page, which are great, which are comforting, which are uplifting and inspiring, but if they're not making a difference in our life, sort of what's the point? So this is the point. For the last three weeks, and you can go back and watch those on YouTube and on Facebook to see how we got here. And then this week, we're wrapping up 
although we will have one final experiment to talk about, not in next week, but in the week after. But we're wrapping up giving out assignments to you this week. So if you haven't had a chance to do one of them, here's your week. I'm going to go over what they were. And this is the author that we have been following, Pam Grout. She is a Unity person. And this book actually went beyond Unity Circles. It's a number one New York Times bestseller. That's pretty impressive for Unity folks. Our stuff doesn't usually make it that far. And so she really caught on to something with these experiments. And this is my second or third time through them. And I am just as on fire this time and more surprised. And what Pam is helping us to prove is that there is an infinite field of potential. She calls that the FP, FP for field of potential. You might call that God. You might call that the energy of the universe. And what we've discovered is that we only access a tiny part of that because it's so big. It's so infinite that there's always something else. That's the good news of God in the way that we understand God here. That God is potential and love and qualities. It goes beyond a being into beingness. That there is so much more to God that we can even grab hold of. And the good news is that there's always going to be more. Not that we get a limited amount, but that there is an unlimited source to choose from and to tap into. And yes, it makes a difference in our life when we really get this stuff and use it. Because for some of us, it's like, you know, I don't know, that all sounds good, but it hasn't worked in my life or it hasn't always worked in my life. And that's why we're experimenting with it. Like our founders did, Myrtle Fillmore experimented with positive thinking to overcome a lifetime of illness and we have thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of stories just in our denomination about what it means when you shift your thinking. Read a Catherine Ponder book and you'll just get hundreds of stories about a person was thinking this, they changed it, and then something changed. So for the skeptics in the world, we're proving it to ourselves. Because this is what we take hold of. If we think about life as a bunch of dots, so I'm using the balloons for the moment. So let's just say we can basically grab a hold of maybe four dots at any one time, but we're in a room filled with this many dots or balloons. If we could, we could expand to say, oh, my narrow view, now I have this, but that's not even it. It's really a bunch of those rooms looking like this. So picture what I do is pencil point tiny dots filled in the room that you're in right now. It looks something like this. Wow, these are all the information bits available to me. And then you still don't have it, folks, because it really looks beyond even this. This room with an infinite number of rooms, and that's the number of dots that you take in in every second, 400 billion pieces of information. And this is what we can take hold of. So let's play. That's what our book is all about. We have become mad scientists. And we've said, I'm going to put this to the test. I'm going to put it to the test. Test God. Test the field of infinite possibilities for you. Test it and prove it to yourself. And what are you proving? The five basic principles of unity. This is basically what we believe. In unity. God, I hate that phrase. In unity, we believe. Hey, this is what we believe is truth. It's not just the unity truth. This is what we believe. So when a church puts out there, why are we here? What are we for? This is what we're here for. Yes. And we boil it down to the smallest, most powerful statements that we can so that we don't get caught up in differences that start to separate us out. Unity is what we call a big tent church. So there's room for a lot of varying beliefs, but we basically get it down to the first two. Take the first two, and that's really our belief system. And then the second three are how we live it. So God is good 
everywhere present, the potential of goodness. It's active. God is active everywhere. And we are God expressing. We are spiritual beings made in the image and likeness of the divine. And so the first two statements are basically a statement of oneness. One thing is happening here, God. God is happening everywhere. And we are God as well. We are an expression, if that makes you more comfortable. We are God at the point of us. We are in this, we can't be separate. Now, how do I live my life knowing there's one thing happening? I use my thoughts, I use my prayers, positive directed thoughts towards the divine or from the divine, and I act from that. That I get myself straight inside before I go out. So life is lived inside out, thoughts, prayers, then actions. And here's my little shorthand for it. I love mnemonics. I love things that help me remember it. Because the five basic principles of unity are so important. And a friend and I were laughing the other day. I wonder how many people in unity can actually say what our five beliefs are. And so here's a way to remember them. There's a shorthand that is God is. I am, those are the first two, remember? And then I think, I pray, I do. So you can use that. God is, I am, I think, I pray, I do. And I expanded it just a little to remind us, me, what that means. So God is good. And so am I. And so are you. And so is this. That reminds me that the goodness of God is in me and in every person and in every situation. All right. And then think it, pray it, do it. And then there's a little memory tool that goes with that. Gig, a sigh, a say, a sit, tip a do. Weird, I know. But if you start practicing it, I had a friend who was a nurse and she used to walk around in the emergency room going, gig, a sigh, a say, a sit, because it helped her remember God is good. And so am I, so are you, and so is this. Think it, pray it, do it. So take that for what that's worth for you, but gig a sigh, a say, a sit especially has helped me. Here was the first experiments that we started with. Unexpected blessings. You wrote down, I expect an unexpected blessing this week. And we had wonderful stories last week or two weeks ago. Christopher got a guitar when all he needed was a guitar string. His teacher then lent him a better guitar for the whole rest of the uh, term. And exciting things like that happen. And then we prove to ourselves that when we focus on specific things, we will see that they are already there. So we experimented by looking for green cars. I know it sounds really silly and simple. That's the point. That's the point, that if we can realize that there are more green cars than we ever knew there were, what else can we realize there's more of in our life? It's not about green cars. It's about the field of potential that is right here that we don't always know. And then it was yellow butterflies. And I shared that on the uh, sticker for my town that I live in is a yellow butterfly that I was literally looking at one. Every day I got in my car and I never saw it because I wasn't looking for it. So what we look for, it's not necessarily that it draws it to us, it's that it's all there already and now we're seeing it. And so several of you shared your stories and here's one that I want to share with you today. This was about an unexpected blessing someone got. They got a text from their sister and hey, everybody gets texts all the time, but this one was different. And it was within two days of when this person wrote down, I'm going to get an unexpected blessing. And the text was different because of the love that her sister expressed and how proud she was that she was her sister. I mean, who gets one like this? It touched and continues to touch me so deeply. And the first, further blessing, really the biggest blessing, was it opened her heart to speak what's been on her mind, but she hadn't said to her sister. 
The loving words from her sister opened the door to give her the courage to nurture a deeper relationship with each other. And thank you to the person that shared it with me. Ah, what a powerful story. And that's what it is. This blessing came and really there was an internal blessing that was ready to come out. And last week, one person had shared that they realized instead of asking for a blessing, they made up their mind to be the blessing. It gives me goosebumps just to think about it. And that he decided to help his family member pay her medical bills. Being the blessing and getting the blessing, it's the same thing. It's just two sides of the same coin. And you can demand a blessing like Jacob did when he wrestled with the angel, with God. I demand my blessing. That is a powerful prayer. If you haven't already, go ahead and do it again this week. It doesn't mean you only have to do it once. Keep playing with it. And this is what the person said they felt after they got that text, gobsmacked. Thank you. That's what happens when you play and you challenge yourself. And then last week we did this. I can't wait to see if anybody has a fun story. By intending or asking, I can draw things into my life, like a specific thing. I had a story when I was uh, in seminary that uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to pay the rest of my tuition without going into uh, 401k, and I would have, and I said, I am asking the universe for help here, and within a week, I got a full scholarship for my last term. I also decided to re and I had realized at the same time that I wasn't fully tithed, and so there was some money that I paid out, and the money came right back to me. And so our intention was to either manifest something into our life, or we asked a yes or no question. That's what I did. I wasn't so much about I wanted to get something. We could ask a yes or no question and get guidance from the universe. So I'm gonna check over into the chat box in a minute and see if there's any stories. So for those of you who did write this down and gave yourself the experiment, let us know what your results were. So either we were manifesting something into our life or we were manifesting an answer or we were continuing on with the first week. All right, so uh, let me check back in here that uh, Jeanette uh, said, I didn't see any butterflies, but I have placements with butterflies all over them and I did not see them right in front of me. I love that. Because Jeanette, I do remember last week, you were one of the folks that said nothing happened this week. And I said, okay, you know, for those that it didn't keep going, <laughs> they were on her placemats right in front of her. There you go. So my sticker, your placemats, what are we not seeing? And Morgan has something that she needs to do so she won't be there. Um, she's got three little kids and she'll find out more. Oh, definitely let us know, Morgan. Um, Carolyn is getting ready to, uh, have a couple more sessions with the kids. So definitely be in touch and we will announce this also. God smacked. And uh, yes, Morgan, also Tanya is uh, off to soccer, but Tanya would be happy to connect with you as well. That's great. It just started becoming a big deal, soccer. All right, so we got some soccer going back and forth. Well, here we go. Here's a blessing. Their granddaughter Rowan is home from Nick U. Wow, it's been what, I think four or five weeks. So we had a little tiny baby for Ruth in Dallas and she's home, everybody. Yay, celebration. There's a blessing. We knew it was coming. We, we uh, didn't know when it would come. So now it came during this time. Hello, this is fantastic. Also, Jeanette Gordon just realized butterflies on the runner of my table, Monarch ones too. Again, it, it could be seen as something that's silly. But this is the universe. This is proof. This is you proving to yourself everything that's out there. And what aren't we seeing? What is a blessing that we're not seeing? This is why we do a gratitude practice and all of this. Thank you for going on this adventure. And if there's more that comes up, please go ahead and type them in. Thank you for telling me your stories and, and letting me know how this is working for you. And so for all of us, Take a moment and think back over the last few weeks. Maybe an unexpected blessing slipped by you. 
Maybe you thought, oh, this is kind of silly, but now that I'm hearing some stories, I'm going to look for green cars. Actually, every day I'll have a moment usually where I think, oh, green cars. And within a few minutes, I'll look. I have seen some of the craziest colors of green, which to me is the universe just having fun with me. And if you didn't see anything, why do you think that is? You know, take a look in for yourself. Maybe I didn't really put the intention into it. Maybe there were other things that happened. And so it wasn't in this experiment, but now that I think about it, blessings came a different way. And the big question is, what do you think about this field of potentiality? Do you think, if you didn't yet, that it's possible that a blessing could come your way? Is it possible that I could look at the things that have happened and see a hidden blessing? Or could I really be silly and play with this and gosh darn it, discover that there are more green cars and yellow butterflies? And that's a step into the pool. I like to call it stepping into the shallow end of the pool before we dive into the deep end and do some of the more difficult things, maybe playing around and having fun in the shallow end with butterflies and things like that. Let me replay what happened when I showed last week how powerful we are that we can literally direct our energy and make something happen. And I hope that the sound is working. Whoops. Going back, going back. Sorry, I can't do that in that app. Well, at least she's speaking to me, so let's give it a try. We're conducting an experiment today about our energy to prove that where we direct our energy can change the outer world. So these wands are going to be my energy detectors. And in the beginning, they're going to flap around. And then I'm going to think about something positive. I'm not going to move my hands. And you're going to see these wands come together. And now I'm going to think about something negative and you're going to see these wands go apart. So they've already started to go apart and the more I think negatively, the more they go apart. Now I've just moved. I'm going to do one last thing and I'm going to direct my attention to my right and see if the wands will follow my attention without me moving or my eyes moving. There you have it, folks. I encourage you to get yourself two wire hangers and undo them, make them like. Yes, indeed. You can watch that again later if you'd like to. And I also showed it last week. You can make those yourself. And I'm going to share with you the next experiment in the book. You can choose to do it on your own if you'd like. I already did it for you. And it was another one of those mind blowers. If I focus on a row of seeds, they will grow faster. So a few years ago, I set up and I prayed for the front row of these seeds. And then within a week, you could see the front row, ignore the back set, the, the catnip didn't grow as fast, but dill in the very front here, the superhero principle is that I have power here. And so I prayed and you can see the front row began more. And after about 10 days, there were uh, about 100 little different shoots and about 20 in the back row. More and more, the front row, and you can see there, there's a huge, big tuft in the front. And so the front actually did grow faster. Because quantum physics reveals that there is a basic oneness in the universe. We are once again proving that connection that we are still connected to everything, including seeds. It's called non-locality. That's part of the teaching of quantum physics, that um, when two particles behave synchronously, synchronously with no intermediary, and what they have found is quantum entanglement is once two particles touch, they are forever together. 
And what we know spiritually is that we are all always joined together. And this stuff that seems crazy right now, like experimenting on seeds or that once someone in one country could be somehow in touch with someone in another country is gonna be common sense according to Stephen Hawking. It's just gonna be common sense in the future. So let's play one more time. Here's your experiment for this week, if you so choose. If I telepathically send a specific message to a specific person, I'll get evidence they received it. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to find yourself a piece of paper. You're gonna write down, I am going to uh, respond, correspond with this person. To start with, I recommend someone you know, although there was a story in her book about someone who did get a call from someone she didn't know. But start with someone you know and send them blessings and love and energy. Let them know that you are thinking of them and ask for something from them to give you a call, to bring you a gift, to message you on Facebook. I am thinking about this person in my life, drawing them to me, and I will see evidence that we have connected. So let's test how connected we are to someone in our life. And then here's a different one if you want to do, oh, hold on. Yes, let me mention that Ho'oponopono is a great example of what this experiment is showing us how we are connected and a person doesn't need to know that we are praying for them, that we can be sending positive energy to someone. And in the teaching of Ho'oponopono, this doctor prayed over files of individuals who got better. You can look that up on the internet as well. True story, not um, an urban legend. The practice of Ho'opono, of sending blessings to somebody. And so that's what you are doing and then seeing evidence that you connected. And then here is an even simpler one. This is what I'm going to do this week. The hypothesis is if I change my outlook and look for good, it will show up. And I know all of you folks on the, on the screen here today know that. I know that you know that in new thought. I know that you know as we change our energy and look. So let's experiment and write down how many good things. And for some of us, if we might be stuck right now and seeing a lot of negative things, let's reset it and remind ourselves there's just as much and actually way more goodness, prosperity, abundance, the room that you are in is filled with infinite dots of potential, of goodness, of health, of love, of all these wonderful things. So that is another powerful exercise to prove it to yourself, to not just take it from me, but to prove it to yourself. And there was a woman who her life was not going anywhere. She had had a child earlier than she planned. She had had a drug addiction, but she got over it. But she always knew that she wanted to act, that she wanted to perform. But she found herself working in the makeup and hair department of a funeral to make ends meet. She didn't know how it would happen, but she never lost this dream of acting. And she eventually took a little acting class. And sure enough, after probably 20 years of a life where it wasn't working out, the potential was still there for her. And Whoopi Goldberg finally got discovered. And this is what she reminds us about with the field of potentiality, that anything's possible because she's lived it. If it hasn't happened yet, it's not because it can or won't, it just hasn't happened yet but it's still possible. And that's what Whoopi's reminding us. And that's what we're reminding ourselves when we look for as many blessings as we can. And again, it's, as I said last week, it's not about the stuff. It's about proving the existence of God for you. About proving that there is more good ultimately and that the light always wins. So experiment this week, have fun with this.
And I'm going to try our song that we had from last week. So we now seem to be getting this working towards the end here. Have fun being an instrument of God in this world, because that's truly what you are. You are an instrument of the divine. I am an instrument of the divine. I am an instrument of the divine. I want to play in the symphony of Satan. I am an instrument of the divine. Divine, I am an instrument of the divine. Remember to dance. Of the divine, I want to play in the symphony of sacred love. I am an instrument of the divine. Never again will I wander. Never again will I die. Suddenly I can see clearly Love is what this life is about Yeah, yeah, yeah I am an instrument of the divine I am an instrument of the divine I am an instrument of the divine I want to play in the symphony of sacred love Never again sweating from dancing so much. That was so fantastic. That is my instant cheer me up song. Thank you for being with us again, whether it's live right now or watching later. And thank you for being part of supporting this ministry with your financial donations as well. We so appreciate your consciousness, your attention, and the donations financially that help keep us going. So if you haven't yet, there is an easy way to give. If you look very up at the very top description, there's an easy donate button for you, a link to click on. You can also go to our webpage. And there's a donate button here on Facebook. So if the basket were passing you by and you'd be putting something in there today, you can now do that electronically. We also are accepting checks at the church if you would like to mail us a check. The address and someone asked last week at our Ask the Board session, what if I'd like to give cash? We can do that too. So our assistant, Betsy, is in the office generally Monday through Thursday from 10 to or 9 to 1. So call the office, email the office and say, I'd like to drop by with some cash during the week and we would be happy to do that for you. And you can also go ahead and set up online banking, which makes it even easier. Let's now affirm our blessing together of all these wonderful tithes and offerings. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. If you haven't had a chance yet, please be sure to check out the minutes. We are now sharing the minutes from the board meetings that happen every month. They are now on the board page. There's also a link up at the top to go directly there. You can also read my minister's report. We wanna do everything we can so that you know what's happening at the church. 
In addition to the board minutes, I want to remind everybody to vote, to go ahead and register if you haven't. And a reminder that voting is an act of love. It is a spiritual practice. It is part of doing this practice that we talk about. And I want to give a shout out to all the folks that have been participating according to Facebook. These are the folks that have done the most chit chatting in our box over there. So thanks to Chris, Arturo gets a win because he's always posting the links at the end. And Jeanette, Linda from Ames, Iowa actually popped up near the top for us. She's commented quite a bit. Uh, thanks to Bobby, Jean, Karen, Cindy, Pat, Isabel, and Tanya. Those are the folks. And you may notice that one person is missing. Um, and if anybody has a guess on who our number one participating member is, go ahead and type it over there. You may notice that she's missing. And here she is. Drum roll, please. Dun, 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 dun. Carolyn Danoon is our most engaged poster over the last few weeks. So thank you, Carolyn. She has posted 23 times. Thanks, Carolyn. I know you're here with us every week. And that, again, is our youth person. And she's going to be coming up with something for the kids coming forward. And a reminder to everyone to check your emails, donate. We're on YouTube. Refer your friends over. And let's be safe. Let's wear those masks. Next week, time change. Next week, I will be taking a Sunday off. And you will be watching Rev Deb again, if you would like, 1030 Unity of Ames. How do I get there? There's a link up top. We will send a link in the email and it will be posted by Beth on our Facebook page. So look for it in all those many places. Or you can go to Unity of Ames on Facebook at 1030. It's a little bit earlier next week. So do come over and join us for Zoom Fellowship. And remember, we do have our chaplains with us. And I do want to address, um, show a couple of things here that people have been saying, uh, trying to main, especially focused on blessings. Yeah, thank you, Patricia. And Jeanette has a suggestion. If you would like to come over to our Zoom Fellowship, this could be something for us to chat about. What are you doing that's working for you to keep your spirits lifted right now and to keep you positive if there's something going on in your life or just life. And so Jeanette's already thought about something. So, hey, come on over and check that out. And Marilyn just had a blessing. She had a clogged toilet that had been, she'd been dealing with. I tried prayer during the song and the toilet flushed. Well, there you have it. I mean, what more can I say? We have now unclogged a toilet. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. I love it. And Carolyn Danoon, there's her lovely face. Really? Yes, you are the number one poster, Carolyn. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. Really, thanks, Marilyn, for letting us know about that. And a reminder to everyone here that you are fabulous and wonderful and stupendous, magnificent, glorious, whatever your words are, everything good for you, my friends. Have a beautiful week. And as my friend, taught, uh, someone taught me this week, instead of have a great week. May the week have a great you. I'll see you next week or in two weeks. I'll see you in two. Bye-bye.